Now, scientists from the universities of Oxford and Toronto have collected data that says 2.6 billion people, a third of the world's population, could be at risk of contracting the Zika virus. They believe the most vulnerable, pop vulnerable populations are in Africa and Asia, and that people in Pakistan, Indonesia, Nigeria, and India have the least protection against the virus. Well, for more on this report, Derek Gatherer joins us now from Lancaster, England. He is a lecturer at Lancaster University who specializes in virology. Thanks so much for joining us. When we first started reporting this, it was a Brazil story. Then it became an America story. Now it's Asia and Africa. Just how fast is this virus spreading and why? We know that the virus was in Asia and Africa before it was in the Americas. The, the question really is whether that previous exposure provides the people of those two continents with any immunity to the virus so that as it travels back from Brazil via international air travel and so on uh, to, the, to the Asian and African continents, will we see outbreaks such as we've seen in Brazil or, or will it fizzle out because the population is already immune? Uh, we don't really know that yet. So. What can we learn from those who have had this immunity? Is there a fear that it's mutating and that that immunity will no longer be able to stop it? Well, there, there are some uh, model systems, for instance, in macaque monkeys, which are currently being used to test the, the vaccine that's been developed. And these are also being used to test whether uh, infecting a monkey with an African strain, for instance, provides that monkey with subsequent immunity against a, 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 an Asian strain or an American strain and, and vice versa. But we don't have those results yet. Those are, are, are essential things that need to be done for testing the safety of the vaccine, but they'll also be very useful to us from a, a human epidemiologist point of view to, to work out whether we've got a chance that American Zika will uh, infect people in Africa and Asia. Okay, so when we hear this figure, 2.6 billion people potentially at risk, how frightened should we be? I think that we need to be concerned about Zika virus. I don't think that frightened is, is quite the word to use at the moment. The, the figure is, is arrived at by looking at areas that already have dengue virus infection with regularity. Now, dengue virus is a relative of Zika virus, and it's spread by the same types of biting insects, by the Aedes aegypti and Aedes uh, albopictus mosquitoes. So where a, a country can sustain a seasonal or permanent dengue outbreak, then it's also possible it could sustain another flavivirus uh, like, like, for instance, Zika virus. Um, the the uh, number of places in the world that are potentially going to get the virus back from Brazil uh, depends on the air travel between Brazil um, and those parts of the world. So, for instance, in Africa, uh, Portuguese-speaking Angola, which is in the west of Africa, the, the capital Luanda is a very big hub for direct air travel from Latin America to Africa. Um, and uh, it is in a dengue area, so that part of West Africa would be high up the surveillance list. In Asia, there are rather more um, cities that, that are, are hubs of high air travel from uh, Latin America. Many cities in the Indian subcontinent and also right up the, the, the Asia-Pacific coast, uh, Singapore, Hong Kong, almost as far north as Shanghai, um, it, it's possible to, to maintain a dengue infection. And they also have high levels of traffic from Latin America. So this, this enables us to prioritize those places that need surveillance. Surveillance is one thing, but is there more that could be done to actually try and stop the spread of this now? Could the WHO be taking more action at this phase, for example? Basic prevention is just the same kind of thing that we've seen for the past several months in Brazil. The, the fumigation of areas where mosquitoes are breeding and the attempt to remove bodies of standing water and so forth where the mosquitoes can lay their eggs. One of the really important things that, that we need to know, as you alluded to earlier in the report, is that we need to know how many people really are immune in Asia and in Africa. Uh, most of the studies on that subject are quite old. We have data from some parts of West Africa that indicate that over half of the population uh, has, have antibodies to Zika virus. In Asia, the figure's a little bit less. There was one Indonesian study that produced a figure of 15% immunity. But they, they were both done decades ago, and we need up-to-date figures so that we can assess exactly how protected non-American populations will be against the virus. Okay. Derek Gatherer, thank you so much for joining us from Lancaster.